in this new episode of South Park. I mean, uh, tutorial video. Please don't sue me, Trump. In this video, I'm going to show you how to balance and true your crank. This will work for any bicycle engines. After this, you'll have a more smoother riding experience, a longer lasting frame and engine, quicker throttle response or revving, vroom vroom, and maybe some more performance. If you want to do this, watch the entire video and don't miss anything. If you don't want to do any work or have the tools to do so, you can buy a pre-balanced and true one from smilingperformance.com using my code TRENDBIKES for 5% off your orders. Also, they're now selling 42 stroke cranks, so that's cool. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. For balancing, you need an accurate scale, some kind of custom stand or rig, it doesn't have to be so perfect. I've used rails before, just make sure it's level. Drill bit made for metal, either a 3 8 or half inch. I'd recommend a drill press, it's more precise and quicker. If not, a regular drill will do, it just may take a while. Then a calculator coded by Mike and Bikes. And for truing, well, I stand. A dial indicator with a magnet base, or without whatever you prefer, it depends on your stand. Either a hammer, a hydraulic press, or a vise, or all the above, you'll see later. Now, I need to find the current balance factor of the crank. I need to build a better stand, but for now this will do. I like to use oversized bearings to reduce the amount of friction possible. I don't know how to explain it, shut up, okay. There's an issue with cranks with four holes, two on each ribs. The rod falls down, which is not supposed to happen. You can hang weights to the rod this way. So you got two options. One, hang weights on the bottom of the crank, which I've never done before. Or two, remove weight on the top until it rises up. Rolling up the blunt. Okay, good enough. Make a hook. Add weights until it stops moving. <coughs> until it stops moving. I take a closer look at the crank to see if it's still a little bit too heavy or too light. I make sure it doesn't want to go up or down a, a tiny bit. I try to balance that out. Looks okay to me. Good enough. So let's weigh the weights. Then the piston assembly. Then the top of connecting rod. Make sure it's level and put something under the crank. Then put the numbers in the calculator. 36.4%, wow that is way too low. Or you can calculate it the old fashioned way. Let's fix that. What percentage should you go for? I'll make this easier for you. If you cruise at lower RPM and only go 9-10,000 RPM, I would do 50%. If you like to go fast with a 12,000 RPM build and also cruise at lower RPM, I would do 55%. If you want to do 14 to 15,000 RPM for racing, then I would do 60-65%. If you want to do a wide range, cruise at lower RPM and top out 14 to 15,000 for top speeds, then I'd probably do 57% or higher. Okay, next section. The reciprocating mass is 138.8 grams. I've decided I want 57%. It says I need to remove 28.6 grams. Okay, next section. I want to use a half inch drill bit. It tells me how many holes and deep I need to drill. The holes it tells you are divided into each ribs. If you want to do 8 holes, you need to divide it. Remember to measure the thickness of your ribs. Mine's 15 and a half millimeters, so I'm good. If you're still watching, make sure to subscribe, like the video for more epic content and builds.
There we go. 31.3 Okay, looks like I need to drill a little bit deeper. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to drill a crank. Very simple. Make sure that this arm is all the way in and this needle or tip is far out on the shaft. Obviously on the smooth surface, not on the keyway. It doesn't have to be so far out. It's just for more accurate readings. You can use this thing and adjust it to find out how many thousands of an inch. Go ahead and push that over here and turn this over. So it's about between six and seven thousandths of an inch and trying to find the highest point. This rod is at the bottom and there's the highest point. So the shaft is this way which means this web is slanted. Let's flip this over. Oh wow, seven and a half thousands. It's the same spot as well. Just wedge in there or something, split this apart. You can use a hammer and a wedge or something. Use a wedge in there, hammer that. Or you can use a hydraulic press or a vise or something. I'm gonna place this here and use a socket. Let me show you how easy it is to split that apart. Just a little bit of force. Boom, that's it. I would be careful and split this apart a little bit. Check again and repeat multiple times so you don't go too far. Look at that, it's getting better. Yeah, this one has more run out than the side. Anyways, I'm gonna try again. I went too far. So now this is the other side. Yeah, you see that? I went too far. I'm gonna press on like this. Yep. It's back now. Yeah, it's pretty easy to go too far with a little bit of force. Ooh! What about this side? Okay, and this side is basically perfect. It's like maybe half a thousandth of an inch. Now we have to deal with this. The rod facing this way and there's a highest point right there. So the shaft is slanted this way with the rod this way. Okay, so the webs are actually skewed a little bit. Like this, the shaft this way goes up. Highest point. I need to hammer the side. Okay, that's better. A little bit more. Don't hammer too hard, just a little bit. So that's fixed. That's better now. I'm gonna stop right there and call that good. That's the best I can do. So now to keep this screwed for a long time, what you should do is tack weld at least four spots. If you ever need to replace the bearing or the rod, you can simply press that out and the welds will break. I've done it many times. You can see that I broke it to take a part of this. Make sure to protect this with masking tape or plastic or something around it. If you have clearance issues between the ribs and the case, just shave it down. Easy peasy.